Okay, this video is about section 10.2, mass in the mole. Okay, so last lesson went over what a mole was. Now we're going to relate that to the mass of different elements and different compounds. We're going to convert between the number of moles and the mass of elements. Convert between the number of moles and the number of atoms in an element. Okay, so we use conversion factors to do that. Molar mass, a new vocabulary thing. We're going to go over that in a minute. A mole always contains the, sum, the same number of particles. However, moles of different substances have different masses. Okay, so a mole of copper and a mole of carbon have different masses. That's just like, remember, a mole was kind of like the same way we use a dozen, like a dozen baseballs and a dozen footballs, different things, different masses, different properties, but there's still 12 of them. Same thing with a mole of copper and a mole of carbon. Same different properties, different masses, but the same number of them. Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 24th. Okay, so just like one copper atom is a different thing, different mass. Molar mass. Molar mass is the mass in grams of one mole of any pure substance. Okay, so What's the great thing about this? When you get a mole of something, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms, when you get this number of things, it's that in atoms or compounds or whatever we're talking about, it's equal to its atomic mass. What's the atomic mass is we get that from the periodic table. So whatever that number of its atomic mass is on the periodic table, that's going to be how much it weighs in grams. So one mole of whatever we're talking about, you look up its number on the periodic table, and that's how much one mole of that substance weighs. Okay, so we're going to do moles to mass. So to do that, we do that conversion factor. What do we want to find? We want to find the mass in grams. We almost always use grams in chemistry. And they give an example here of finding three moles of copper. Okay, so the three moles came from, we just made up. But this number here, this, this 63.546 grams, that came from the periodic table. If you look on the periodic table, you'll find that cop the mass number under copper is that same number. So one mole of copper weighs 63.5 grams. Okay, so we had three of them, so we just multiplied 63 and a half by, by three, and the moles canceled out, and we ended up with grams. So that's three moles equals 191 grams, three moles of copper. Okay, so go the other way. Convert moles with Avogadro's number as a conversion factor. So if we want to figure out how to go from one thing to the other, this is a little chart shows that we're at grams. This is, oops, can't write. This is grams over here. To go to grams, to moles, everything goes through the moles. And then if you want to figure out how many particles you have, you have, to, you have to multiply by Avogadro's number. So if we're going from grams, we have to figure out how many moles, and then multiply those moles times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Okay, so whenever it was, is whatever thing is on the bottom, that's what we're dividing by. So if we have one mole, uh, we want to figure out how many, we have grams to moles, we have to divide by this number of of grams is the is the the molar mass. One mole has that many grams. Whatever the molar mass of whatever we're talking about, whether it's copper, like in the last example, or if it's a compound like water, H two O, would have a molar mass of each hydrogen has one. It weighs about one, and each oxygen weighs 16. So, two times one plus 16 is 18. So, the molar mass of water is about 
18 grams. Okay, so if we had, well, I'll do some examples here after this slide shows over and show you guys how to do that. Okay, so the mass in grams of one mole of any pure substance is that's its molar mass. We get the molar mass from the periodic table. Whatever its atomic mass is underneath that element, that's its molar mass. Okay, so we're going to... In the show. Discard my changes. To go to some examples here on how to calculate different things. I'll make the screen a little bigger. Okay. So find the molar mass of each compound. Okay, so we start with carbon and carbon dioxide. So carbon is to find the molar mass, this would be um, carbon would be 12. How many of those do we have? We have one of them. Plus oxygen, which is 16. How many of those do we have? We have two times two equals 12 plus 32. I'm just using these numbers rounded to the nearest tenth of a gram. Okay, so that's going to equal 44 grams. Kind of ran out of room there. Okay, so do the same thing for aluminum oxide. Okay, so aluminum oxide, how many alum, what does aluminum weigh? So we look on our periodic table. Aluminum weighs to the nearest tenth, it weighs about 27. The number underneath it is 27. So we know one mole of aluminum weighs 27 grams. How many moles do we have in this compound? Well, the subscripts tell us how many moles of each thing we have. So we have two moles of aluminum. So we're going to multiply by two. Okay. And then we're going to work with oxygen again, which is almost exactly 16. And times three on that. So quick little calculation here. 27 times 2 is 54 plus 16 times 3 is 48 equals, oh, that's too big, 54 plus 48. All right, so it equals 102 grams. So one mole is, that's the molar mass of that, so that equals one mole, right, in grams. So how many grams are in one mole of that? Okay, so we do the similar calculation with molar mass of this hydrocarbon. So carbon is 12. That's the number, that's the atomic mass of carbon times six of them plus hydrogen. This molar mass is, I mean, the atomic mass is one times 10 plus oxygen again, which is, of course, 16.0 times 5. So this equals 12 times 6 is 72.0 plus 10 plus, is that 80? Equals, make sure I make any mistakes, 82 plus 80 is 162 grams. So that's the molar mass of that hydrocarbon. One mole of that weighs 162 grams. Okay, so zinc and chlorine. I gotta look at my atomic chart here for zinc. And zinc is um, about 65.4 for zinc plus chlorine. Chlorine is, we'll call it 35.5, and we're going to have two of those. We're going to multiply by two. Okay, so 35.5 times two plus 
5.4 is 102.9 grams. Okay, so that's the molar mass of zinc, I mean zinc chloride. That equals one mole of that substance weighs 102.9 grams. Okay, so now we're going to go do some other examples here. So how many moles are there in 25 grams of water? So this that we were given the grams and we want to find the moles. Okay, so this we have to f have to figure out the molar mass of water. Okay, so water is H2O, so its molar mass is 2 plus 16, right? One hydrogen is one, two of them make a mass of two, so water is about 18 grams per mole, okay? So it's grams per mole, okay? So we use that conversion factor. We have grams, but we want to end up with moles. So whichever way whichever unit we want to end up with, we put that unit on the top and we put, if it had grams per one mole. Okay, so we're going to use the conversion factor. We're going to use one mole because we want to end up with moles and we're going to have 18 grams on the bottom. One mole, 18 grams, H2O. Okay, so we set up our problem, 25 grams. And we use the conversion factor here. We multiply by the conversion factor. And over here, what happens, right, when the conversion, this is the grams cancel out, right? When one fraction is below the other one, we actually, I put a multiple guy there, and that's mathematically correct. But what you actually do is you divide 25 divided by 18, and you get about, we'll just say about 1.4 moles of H2O. Okay, so in 25 grams, the 25 grams of water, we have 1.4 moles of H2O. Okay, so how many grams are there in 4.5 moles of this lithium oxide? Lithium oxide. So, keep in, we have to find the molar mass of lithium oxide. So, I look up lithium, and it's uh, 6.9, 6.9 times two of those, plus an oxygen, which is almost exactly 16. And so, do my little calculations on that. 6.9 times two plus 16. Okay, so the molar is you get 29.8 grams per mole. That's the molar mass. Okay, so on my conversion, this is what I'm going to use for my conversion factor here. This is my conversion factor. So what do I want to end up with? Do I want to end up with grams or moles? Well, the problem is how many grams? So I'm going to leave it just like that because I want to end up with grams and I want to cancel out the moles. That's per one mole. So I'm going to put that in the middle here, 29.8 grams per one mole mole. Okay, so how many moles do I have? 4.5 moles. Okay, so each one of those moles weighs almost 30 grams. So I'm going to multiply, when I do the multiplication, the moles cancel out, I end up with grams, and when the, every, the numbers are both on top, we just multiply those two together times 29.8 and you get 134.1 grams, okay? So that's how many grams are in four and a half moles of the lithium oxide, okay? So how many molecules are there in 23 moles of oxygen, okay? So this goes back to the other day when they're asking for how many molecules, right? So when they're asking for molecules or atoms or whatever it is, this calls for Avogadro's number, okay? So we have moles, we want to end up with molecules. So for, we're going to put for one mole as 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd 
of whatever we're talking about. Molecules, atoms, ions. That's how many molecules are in one mole. Okay, so we're just going to multiply 23 moles by that. And the moles cancel out. And we're going to multiply 23 times 6.02. To the 23rd, and we get about about 1.4 times 10 to the 25th molecules of O2. Okay, so this was back from what the lesson on 10.1. Uh, how many moles are there in this number of molecules? Okay, so we're looking for moles. So we have one mole has Avogadro's number of molecules, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. Okay, so we're going to put this over here, 3.4 times 10 to the 23rd. Okay. Molecules cancel out. I didn't write. I forgot to write it here. Molecules they cancel out here. We end up with moles here. So when we have this, we have this on top and this on the bottom. We need to divide. So 3.4 to the 23rd divided by 6.02 to the 23rd. Okay, so it comes out to be about 0 0.56 moles. Okay, so those are some examples. We have some worksheets to work in class. I hope that helps you out, and we'll see you in class tomorrow.